Hello everyone, today I want to talk about this new diffusion model called the Tune Crafter. This is a very recent research paper that generates cartoon style interpolations using two image frames. Right here, we can see the showcase, there's one starting frames and end frames. In between these two image frames, this diffusions model are able to generate videos of motions, any actions in between to generate an animation for that. In this example, almost both of these start image frames and the end frame. It is almost look identically the same image, but is able to generate something moving like this. There are some elements, some light objects going on for the result. This diffusions model are actually doing pretty good for very short actions or animation. Like this one, the shadows are followed through while the characters are walking and it is able to replicate or doing the very consistency styles for the characters and shadows as well. But one thing while I was testing, it is able to do that for a simple motions like that. If you put too much complex movement, it won't be able to do that very consistent performance. And creating a sketch looks like outline for each frames. And throughout that, it predict the color of each objects. It fill up those colorations. And at the finals, it generate an animation video's output. They are able to generate not very high resolutions. As you can see, is describing the maximum pixels are able to do is 512. I think it's okay for a new research AI model. We can upscale the video's image as well after the productions. And here's the hugging face page. I will put the link in the descriptions. This is the AI model files cost 10 gigabytes size and it has the encoder and the sketch extractor as well. They have the demo page on hugging face. You can try out out online. For people that have lower end computer hardware, I suggest run this model on this hugging face demo page only because it costs about 17 gigabyte VRAM to generate a two seconds video animation. So if you have VRAM that below 17 gigabytes, don't even think of download this. Ideally, 20 gigabytes or more. You can create different animations here, and by default, it comes with some examples for you to test out. For instance, a simple animation of a guy walking down the street, creating emotions through his movements. For Comfy UI, we can use the Comfy UI Dynamic Crafter Wrapper to run the Tune Crafter Diffusions model. I have mentioned Dynamic Crafter models previously, and you can check that out. I have not showcased running this model before because I tested it in my own time and found that Dynamic Crafter is of relatively low quality. There are many generated results like this, and sometimes it shows a stock footage text watermark on your result. Perhaps their Dynamic Crafter models are using stock footage from Shutterstock or other stock footage marketplaces, gathering those video footages and training with them. So, you might see Shutterstock watermark from Dynamic Crafter generate result. I wouldn't recommend using this one to run any video animations. However, Tune Crafter do not happen with this. These diffusion models can also be run using custom nodes and they are already integrated with Dynamic Crafter custom nodes. Let's go back to the setup installations. They have explained how to do the installations here and it's pretty simple. Just like many usual custom nodes, you install and run the requirements.txt to install the dependencies. I won't go into too much detail about that here. Instead, I want to focus on Comfy UI itself. So first of all, you can check out this Dynamic Crafter Wrapper Custom Nodes package and you can download this to run the Tune Crafter as well. It is already integrated as an extension support in Dynamic Crafter Custom Nodes. Once you download this, for example, I have already downloaded it, you must also download the Tune Crafter Diffusions model. For Comfy UI, we have the fine tuned Tune Crafter checkpoint models here, optimized for running in Comfy UI. These models require lower hardware specifications to run because they have been reduced to FP16 and generated in safe tensors files. So they are already optimized for Comfy UI. I have installed them here. Once you download and load the Dynamic Crafter models, you can select the Tune Crafter Diffusions model, which will download the AI models by itself the first time you click the cube prompt to run the whole workflow process. You can also download the models manually. 
just like before. Either way, you can get the Diffusion's model files. Let's test this workflow. This is the low VRAM settings workflow, which enables smoother operation in ConfUI using local machine. Here, as you can see, I have chopped two scene image frames from one animation, and here is the result of this animation. It uses the starting frames and the end frames to generate this whole video animation process and outputs it here. I want to show the whole video, the original video scenes of this one. So, this is the original scene of the stock footage. It is very similar to what I have in ConfUI. However, as you can see, the motions cannot replicate the speed of the original video footage. In the ConfUI output, the motions of Tooncrafter are slower. The scenes with the trees behind the car as the background move slower, and it can only generate about 2 seconds of animation. The resolution is 512, so it will not be large or high resolution. You can use an upscaler for that. So far, this does not fully replicate what we can do in an animation editor. There are other results that I have tested, so let's bring those up as well. Here is another cutting scene from one of my stock footage. And this example from the original video is a slow motion shot of a woman surfing on the water, jumping like that. There are many complex motions and elements going on in the background. There's, you know, a water wave behind the character. Lots of things are happening. Here we can try these two image frames and generate an animation like that as well. I see their paper usually focuses on animating cartoon styles or 2D styles like that, but I found that it also works for realistic video footage. So click Q prompt to start the process. It will generate short video motions. By setting the length of the video scenes it generates, you can specify the frame numbers here. For instance, this one has 16 frames and uses 8 FPS. Therefore, with 16 frames, the result will be 2 seconds long. Let's see what the preview looks like. The water wave is doing well. It can kind of replicate what we have in the real motion of this one. Of course, this footage is taken from HD cameras and there are more details in the water wave. But in the animation here, it understands the motion from this diffusion model and can generate some water wave movements. However, the character's face starts to morph and the hand begins to deform. So it cannot fully generate very detailed animations in some cases using Tooncrafter. To be honest, this is a very low resolution size. We cannot generate a full HD or even 1024 pixel resolution animation without consuming a lot of VRAM just for two seconds of animation. I'm not sure if they can optimize the backend coding in these uh, custom nodes or this diffusion model to reduce memory consumption. Even when I was using a NVIDIA 4090 graphics card, it consumes 17 GB of RAM and sometimes 20 GB of RAM as well. There are some disadvantages, such as only being able to generate 2 seconds of animation. This isn't helpful for real animation or movie production situations. Here's another animation I did. This is a cartoon style with a boy running and an airplane at the end of the scene. And the generated result is kind of awkward, as you can see. Here's another result I did a few times with these two images. It's not always going to accurately show the airplane flying in the sky and the boy running, so it cannot always perform as well as shown on the GitHub page. We have to test it. I should say, you know, the result is not always going to be consistent in style or dimensions. So let's wait for this result. But not all situations, not all image frames, are going to perform well using this diffusion model. That's just how it is. They try to predict the motion between two images, and not all AIs are able to do that. Not all actions or motions can be predicted with AI like this. I'm not going to overhype this like some others do, claiming it will change the animation industry forever. I prefer to show real results from my tests, especially since I can test locally on my own computer and show you guys the practical outcomes. I hope you get some inspiration and stay practical. We'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.